There are a few things in life that will get me more excited than a Kingdom Hearts trailer and lo and behold it's a trailer for Kingdom Hearts 4. Uh, to provide some context about right now it is 7.40 a.m. here in California. As most Kingdom Hearts fans will know last night was the 20th anniversary event night but that's all the way over in Japan and so by the time I got home I think it might have been like in whatever time it was uh, it was late it was 2 30 a.m. I had to close and I was like you know what I, I was looking there was nothing that was uploaded just some cool artwork which was nice but like you know what if there's more stuff if there's more stuff I'll see it in the morning and I was tired as hell I was walking my dog and then I checked my YouTube thumbnails and I see holy shit there's a Kingdom Hearts 4 trailer uh, people were skeptical if they would actually put like a real Kingdom Hearts uh, sort of a real meaningful trailer at this event just because you know it's kind of hit or miss when it comes to Kingdom Hearts and showing trailers but they already have something ready and it's a three minute trailer there's also another video on the official channel it's like a seven minute video of all sort of events related to uh, uh, Kingdom Hearts 20th anniversary trailer but for the sake of this video I'm just gonna react to the Kingdom Hearts 4 trailer just because my god <laughs> how could you not be excited i mean it's been three years since kingdom hearts 3 and yeah they definitely couldn't pull that shit where they took like th another 13 years in between title games or whatever so here we go reacting to the kingdom hearts 4 trailer i mean wow three minutes that's a good amount of time so hopefully we see some good stuff all right in three two one click Master Arc. Oh, it's uh, Quadratum. The graphics. Oh my god. Those graphics had me fooled. I thought it was a real place. Oh, what if there's a Disney World too? Oh, these graphics! Whoa! Oh, PS5 for you, man. Wow. The sword, man. That boy is ready. Oh, Strelicia. Wow. Oh, it's a new dark side. There you go. some gameplay. Wow. Some Keyblade transformations, I guess. I don't want to show you, Zora. Oh, no. Oh my 
god, wow. <laughs> that ending, I didn't, didn't expect them to be a tease of Hades right there, holy shit. Okay, so I'll try to go through everything in order. Uh, wow, let's just start off with the graphic style. That had me fooled. I thought it was like, it was going at the beginning, that was like the Square Enix's offices or something like that. It was kind of, going to be kind of like a meta kind of trailer like that. But it turns out, yeah, that's the actual place, Quadratum, that was teased in the Kingdom Hearts DLC Remind and in uh, Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory. Uh, the graphics on that place, I mean, obviously, we're talking about a next-gen system. It looks unbelievable. I mean, in Kingdom Hearts 3 is a graphically superior, beautiful game. Uh, and then you just see how things are upgraded just a few years later with Kingdom Hearts 4. Them graphics, and when you look at the character models now, even Sora's character model is changing a little bit to be it's it's like really getting into that real kind of final fantasy kind of kind of like noctis territory right there but it's cool it's always cool to see sort of an evolution in graphics and stuff like that then when it came to story uh for those who played the game uh you know what was it, uh, union cross uh that was that girl strelitzia the one with the orange hair the kind of pigtail or tails going down like that yeah, that was her, so she's kind of crossing over into sort of main console games now, so that's cool, I guess. Obviously, a lot of that Union Cross stuff is going to play a big role in the future of the next phase of the Kingdom Hearts games. So it's important, I guess, if people keep their information on that, just because that's going to be a big deal. Uh, and when it came to more of the story stuff, um, it's hard to really remember just because it's all like subtitled and whatnot, but you saw it's in Quadratum. You got sort of, a, I guess that's a Heartless or whatever. It was a version of, upgraded version of Dark Side, which thank God I'm tired of that same Dark Side design. This one, it kind of looks like a hybrid between Dark Side and some of the other pure bred Heartless that we've seen. Some of the scarier ones, like the invisible one in what's it called? Uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, Kingdom Hearts 1. And then also a little bit of Chernobog th thrown in there. Kind of that de demonic kind of look. But then it shows some gameplay. And the gameplay, in all honesty, doesn't look too different from what we're seeing in sort of Kingdom Hearts uh, 3 when it comes to sort of that athletic, sort of agile kind of combat, sort of going on poles, using flow motion. Kind of the big sort of difference that I saw visually uh, in terms of the new features. So there's this weird thing where Sora can almost like throw like a sort of a golden chain or whatever to sort of pull himself up on an object almost like he's like webbing on kind of like how spider-man does i don't know how big a deal that is because you already have like i don't know if that's replacing what was it called air stepping where you're sort of like shot locking sort of zooming on to an object or gliding like quick gliding to an object or something like that uh but hey you know kingdom Hearts always sort of really kind of does one will come to the gameplay and I don't think anyone can deny that the gameplay in Kingdom Hearts 3 especially with the stuff they did in Remind with those data battles the gameplay was definitely on point so if they continue with that kind of like boss design and give us some spectacular battles here and there that's cool too uh, yeah besides that it's definitely it, it was it's what you would qualify as kind of a teaser trailer in terms of like you know not showing any kind of like Disney worlds and stuff like that but giving us sort of like just giving us that glimpse of Kingdom Hearts 4 and giving us a really good amount of it just because I did not expect them to really show much of anything or any Kingdom Hearts 4 related stuff at all but if you're gonna do something for the 20th anniversary that's how you do it uh, then the end of the trailer okay so you saw Donald and Goofy they're sort of searching for Sora I guess somewhere or whatever or maybe not it's not even Sora just because at the end you see like a, a blue light and you're like oh who the hell is that and then the voice even though it's Japanese it's like immediately the way the tone was and the way he was talking it's all like is that Hades uh, that's the only character I can think of that it would be, and it's like, Hades, wow, so are they going back to Olympus Coliseum? I, or, or the World Olympus, as well as called in Kingdom Hearts 3. Uh, that would be surprising, just because I thought Olympus and those characters and stuff like that were kind of done after uh, Kingdom Hearts 3, just because they really had, after all the Kingdom Hearts games that had been before, they had really kind of covered all the territory, but... You know, it looked like they were in a cave, so maybe they are in Olympus or something like that. That'd be uh, interesting, but I, I I like Hades, so hey, if they can find a good story reason to bring him back, then sure, cool, why not? Uh, and, that, and then that was the real end of the trailer. There's no, like, release date or nothing like that, but uh, yeah, wow, that was... Uh, Really cool to see. I'm definitely glad I could do a reaction trailer to this to, to this uh, trailer just because, you know, it's Kingdom Hearts, one of my favorite series ever. And to get to see the first glimpse of Kingdom Hearts 4, really cool. I remember when I saw the first glimpse of Kingdom Hearts 3 almost 10 years ago now when it was uh, E3 of 2013. And just to see that glimpse, that was really cool. And that trailer wasn't near the caliber of trailer that this one is. Visually, this one looks like it's like really good right now. So whatever engine, the visual design that they're going with right now, uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 is, Kingdom Hearts 4 is going to be on point. 
Uh, I'm going to quickly also, I want to check out this 20th anniversary reaction tra this trailer just to see what else got announced. Uh, just because I wanted to see the Kingdom Hearts 4 trailer. Uh, but let's see if there was anything with this whole 7 minute trailer right here. Starting... Wait, it's loading. I'm only so late for work. <laughs> I gotta get ready soon. Here we go. Alright, let's see what they got. Uh, looks like it's just some more Union Cross stuff. I think there'll be uh, more after this, so yeah. Uh, this this kind of this dark road stuff, I just don't really. I just don't really care for this art style, man. I, I think if you're gonna have story stuff that's this important, then you kind of you gotta put this game in kind of a different format. But uh, <laughs> yeah, after a while with Union Cross, I'm like, all right, I just stopped following it until the end when they did the finale last year. Just because that story was getting almost too crazy, man. Hurry up. <laughs> I don't have a lot of time for this right now. Some begging dog treats. These are for my dog on the ground right now. Kingdom Hearts, yeah, yeah, Dark Road. Union Cross Dark Road, okay. August 2022. Uh, Alright, whatever. I just don't really care for that stuff anymore. Let's see what's next. An Unwritten Era. Everything is connected, we know. Ooh! Oh, no way. Is this a remake? Oh, please tell me this is a remake. This game really needs it. What, uh... Oh, this is the end of uh, Union Cross. At least, I think? Yep, it is. Please tell me it's a game. It's a game, right? <gasps> it's a game, right? Oh, thank God. Alright, I'm not even paying attention to the uh, subtitles, but... Oh, that's, that's great. <laughs> The, even though it's not a full Union Cross remake, this uh, these kind of game, th that this er that whole key saga, uh, Union Cross, whatever, desperately needed something like in this kind of format. Is that Tangled? Wow! So Kingdom of Corona. Oops! I shouldn't say that out loud anymore. <laughs> Ooh, what world is that? Oh, I think that's the Skylight Kylum. So you look at it visually, it looks like it's carrying over some of that like metal kind of system to where visually they show like a character being or being used in something like that. Oh, that's uh, I think Brain is his name. Kingdom Hearts, Missing Link, cool shit. Alright, I can't imagine. This is already. Ha I think the next bit is just the Kingdom Hearts 3 uh, 4 trailer. Oh, it feels good to say that. Okay, yeah, it is. Alright, so that was that. So, yeah, the, the Dark Road stuff, nah, whatever. But to see that whole finally gets one of those Union Cross things, that whole storyline or whatever, in sort of a real console game format with the Unreal Engine, that's what really, that's what was really needed. Uh, I didn't pay too much attention to the dialogue, whatever. I was just concentrating on the gameplay. 
but uh, yeah, it looks good. It doesn't quite look on the level of like what they're doing with Kingdom Hearts 4. It actually, it looks, it's the Kingdom Hearts 3 engine they're using, which hey, that's still a good engine, whatever, do what you gotta do. But uh, yeah, it was cool that they're doing that. So that's going to take place after, it's not a full remake of that whole uh, key saga, like back cover and regular Union Cross, whatever. It takes place after Union Cross, the finale is what it looks like, because uh, of the whole uh, ephemeral statue and whatnot. So cool stuff, cool stuff right there. Alright, so that'll do it for this reaction video, I guess, to that uh, for the Kingdom Hearts 4 trailer and that uh, other stuff that was in the 20th anniversary trailer, really exciting stuff. So if you made it to the end of this video, thank you for watching.